Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Once again, we're greeted with Dr. Hart. Dr. Hart, thank you so much again for taking the time. I'm happy to be here, Doug. Thanks for you being here. Uh, I'm ecstatic, and we get such great feedback. And in fact, Dr. Hart, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did a short introduction video on neurofeedback, and we've got an overwhelming response for people wanting to know more. Could you dive a little bit deeper into that subject for us? Uh, sure, be happy to. Um, at the time, uh, we're, we're talking about neurofeedback, and I wanted to humanize it. I wanted to make it so that uh, it wasn't scary. Um, and so... Neurofeedback, which is feedback on the activity of your neurons, uh, and there are two types, the uh, evoked potentials uh, and the uh, continuous EEG. We at BioCybernaut study principally the EEG. Um, it is feedback on the activity of your brain. And it's a special case of the general term called biofeedback, which is feedback on biological functions. Now, some of the simplest that you everybody has uh, probably experienced is when you step on a bathroom scale, you're getting biofeedback. When you put a thermometer in your mouth, you're getting biofeedback. You're getting feedback on the result of some ongoing biological processes. Now, standing on a bathroom scale doesn't change very much um, unless you're uh, you know, eating at the same time. Uh, if you're taking a your a temperature, uh, it probably doesn't change uh, very much. Uh, but for example, if it comes up at 99, and then you know a minute later it's 100, and then five minutes later it's 105, you have a serious problem, and you better call 911. Uh, so, feedback on brain waves, and uh, so my goal was to humanize it and make it so that people would understand that it's a form of a special case, feedback on brainwaves. You can do feedback on muscle tension. Uh, you can do feedback on the galvanic uh, skin uh, resistance. You can do actually feedback if you put a thermistor on your finger and then you have a, a light flashing every second, you can learn with that feedback how to warm your hands, which is a a sure cure for Raynaud's disease, which used to be the allopathic physicians would cut off the fingers and toes because they hurt so much and turn blue from lack of circulation. Thermal biofeedback completely eliminated the need to amputate for Raynaud's disease. And so brainwave feedback is a special case of biofeedback. And, uh, you know, some people like to fancify it and call it bio-neurofeedback. Uh, and uh, that's fine, but it shouldn't be scary because just an example of a form of feedback on the activity of some aspect of your biology. So having made it you know, safe and approachable uh, in the last video, hopefully, uh, now my intent is to take you on a deeper dive and show uh, basically what the Beatles might call a magical mystery tour of neurofeedback. Uh, it turns out that uh, the brain is the organ of feedback for our whole body. Uh, and for example, I can close my eyes and bring together, let me see, I'll position this right. Um, and now close my eyes and I can bring together my thumb and each finger. And I don't miss because my brain knows exactly where all parts of my body are. I can tell you that I have, you know, my legs crossed and my right ankle is in front of my left ankle. I don't have to look, I can just tell because I have all kinds of feedback. My brain has all kinds of feedback about where my body is and what it's doing. <clears throat> but curiously, uh, the brain, the organ of feedback has no feedback about its own activity. This is like a missing link. It's like, uh, well, like why? And uh, uh, I, I'm often, uh, uh, found to be saying that why questions are not ones that I usually like to address. How, like if there's something wrong, it may be useful to find out why it's wrong, but it's probably more useful to figure out how to fix it. And that's what neurofeedback is good for, fixing things. And uh, the brain as the master organ of feedback of our body has no feedback about itself. 
And so what we do with our technology is we give the brain feedback about itself. And this is absolutely a stunning development in human uh, technology, human uh, consciousness development. Um, and it, it's not easy to do. Uh, when Herr Dr. Dr. Hans Berger in 1908 went searching for electrical activity in the brain, his technology was beyond primitive. And uh, the first wave that he found was alpha waves, not the fastest, not the slowest, but it was first to be found because it was the biggest and thus the only one that would show up with his weak primitive uh, technology. He used something called a ballistic galvanometer uh, to detect tiny little wiggles. The brain waves are just a few millions of a volt. And with our technology, we amplify them 100,000 times to make them big enough for our computers to read them and process them. And so uh, the attachment of the electrodes is very critical. People who do brainwave feedback without running some form of polygraph uh, 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 run the very serious risk of recording just artifact. Uh, I was in the control room just yesterday uh, and there were two people doing theta waves and uh, one of the electrodes popped off. You could see that it was blurry. Now, uh, they're doing theta one. And so this was not a feedback electrode. And so uh, we elected not to interrupt the person. Were on, they were on a ramp. They were discovered their theta was growing. And to go into the room and interrupt them to fix an electrode, which was not one of the feedback electrodes, it was a, you know, a command decision not to do that. But if you are... If you're not running a polygraph, uh, then and something like that happens, you're going to be doing feedback on garbage, on noise. And so to do it right requires some high technology. Our technicians carefully, well-trained, put the electrodes on, test them with an impedance meter to make sure they have very low impedance uh, so that we have accurate pickup of the signals. And then they're amplified 100,000 times and converted with our technology in a timely way. Feedback is accurate to the, it is effective to the extent it's accurate, immediate, and reasonably aesthetic. And then we, we do the feedback. Now, okay, so now you're getting feedback on your brain activity. With that, you can change your brain waves. When you have feedback, all learning requires feedback. And when you have feedback on your brainwaves, you can learn to change your brainwaves. Well, the exciting thing about that, the exciting things are that brainwaves rule. We actually trademark that. Brainwaves rule. They rule your life. They rule your experiences. They rule your thoughts. They rule your perceptions. You cannot have the experience of the color blue, for example, unless you have the brainwaves for blue in the back of the head. I haven't done the study, but if we had somebody who had no eyes, and they, we could teach them to make those brainwaves with feedback, they would have the experience of seeing blue, even though there was no photons coming in their non-existent eyes. And so brainwaves rule. Then the beautiful thing about it is that when you change your brainwaves, for example, with the BioCyberNot feedback technology, when you change your brainwaves, you change your identity. Change your brainwaves, you change your identity. We have anxiety neurotics who become normal. You, we have people at the extremes of paranoia, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. When they increase their alpha, they're suddenly in the middle of the normal zone, according to the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, the granddaddy of all personality tests. And uh, this, when I first presented this to a group of psychiatrists, I had just been uh, promoted to an assistant adjunct professor of medical psychology, and then the department chair decreed an annual faculty retreat. And I'm showing uh, slides of pre and post alpha training uh, MMPI profiles. And I'm only halfway through my 10 minute talk and two senior bearded members of the psychiatry department are out of their chairs shouting, raving, sh shaking their fists, raving their fingers because they were experiencing fear that this young whippersnapper, the newest member of the department, was going to disrupt their august profession. And yes, brainwave feedback changes, allows people to change their personality, something that psychiatry at that time did not know was even possible. 
Change your brainwaves, you change your identity. Now, we've been teaching recently in the Biosabernaut training, sort of opening the kimono a little bit to show you the magical mystery tour that's possible at Biosabernaut. And what we see, we, we cite um, Frederick Dodson with his wonderful book that actually, I believe, Doug, you were responsible for bringing to our attention called Parallel Universes of Self. And Frederick Dodson points out that identity and reality are synonymous. So when you change your brainwaves, you change your identity. And when you change your identity, your reality changes. So how do you do manifestation? Well, you change your brainwaves, which changes your identity, and that automatically changes your reality. Now, this has been known for hundreds of years. Magicians have known this. In fact, if we look at the Johann Wolfgang von Goethe quote, the famous Goethe quote on commitment, he goes, one elementary truth, uh, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. What is that truth? That the moment one definitely commits, then providence moves too, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material existence, which no man or woman could have dreamed would have come their way. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it, Begin it now. And so where is the magic in that? It's when you commit, when one definitely commits, then providence moves too. Well, most people identify providence in some aspect of God, source, creator, universe. And so when you commit, you take on the identity of the person who is making the commitment. And then providence moves too. Your reality changes. So here's a very simple way it works. Neurofeedback allows you to change your brainwaves. That's number one. When you change your brainwaves, your identity changes. And then as Dodson teaches, when your identity changes, your reality changes because identity and reality are synonymous. So how do you become a magician? Well, you change your brainwaves. How do you change your brainwaves? Come to Biosyphon. Wow. And neurofeedback. Absolutely fascinating as always, Dr. Hart. You got me thinking of so many different things. I'm sure our, our viewers do as well. Thank you again for taking the time to answer our questions and to be with us today. It's lovely to take deep dives with you, Doug. Thank you for the opportunity. Always. Hi, I'm Tony Robbins. Listen, if you are looking to improve your brain, your psyche, your ability, your emotions, your ability to really maximize your performance, um, and you want to really dig into your brain, my dear, my dear friend, Dr. Jim Hart and his BioCyberNet program is extraordinary. I've been through it myself. My wife, Sage, has. Members of my family have. And we found it to be truly extraordinary. But it is not for the faint at heart. Unless you're dead serious about really taking things to the next level, don't bother. We went through the Alpha program designed to maximize your ability to have create alpha waves. And it was challenging and it was incredibly rewarding. And I'd recommend it to anybody serious about improving the quality of their lives or including the quality of their family lives as well. So. Check out Cybernaut, check out Dr. Jim Hart. And uh, if you do, I think you'll be really, really pleased. And the entire time you are learning to think and how you think the, these electrodes create sounds. And you learn how to put yourself in the zone of alpha. But it's a bitch. It's horrible. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that wants easy experiences, but I'd recommend it to anybody that wants to grow immensely. And by the, and the first day I'm like, who do I gotta shoot to get out of this thing? Oh, it's me, I'm the one that did this shit, right? But by the end of the week, all three of us were able to go into this state of alpha. And if you're familiar with alpha, the best way I can describe alpha is there's no problem that can't be solved in alpha. Because every problem that we have was created by us. Thank you for being here and absorbing this information about the science of brainwaves and about the stories of people whose lives have been beneficially altered, improved, by doing brainwave training at BioCyberNet. And now I'm reaching out to you to invite you to come and be a part of the BioCyberNet adventure. BioCybernauts are to inner space what astronauts are to outer space. So come and adventure with us. And if you'd like to leave a comment on the videos, you can do that, or there's a link you can click if you'd like to learn more. We welcome you to BioCyberNet.